So you decided that you want to switch to Linux. You did your research, chose a distribution with a desktop environment that seemed appealing to you and installed it on your PC. But what now? In today's video, we're going over some of the things that you should do after installing Linux on your main PC to ensure the best compatibility with all of your programs, get a proper and optimized gaming experience, as well as make some adjustments to the desktop to truly make it your own. And without anything more to add, let's get straight into it. No matter if you chose a regular workstation distribution like Fedora or a gaming distro like Bassite, after the installation is finished, it's always a good idea to first check for updates to make sure that everything that your system needs has been installed correctly. Some distros also ask you during the first run setup if you want to enable third-party repositories. And it's generally a good idea to enable them, since stuff like the Nvidia driver are proprietary and usually not featured in the regular repos. In any case, Making sure that you have an up-to-date system is key to make sure that you are having a good experience right from the start. Next up, let's start downloading some software. The typical PC user or gamer usually needs the following programs. A web browser, an office suite, Steam and different game launchers, communication software, a way to configure the mouse and keyboards and their audio. On Windows, you might be used to downloading these things from individual websites. And while you can still do that on Linux, the preferred way is to always look them up first on the pre-installed software center. Most modern Linux distros designed for the average user typically come with the FlatHub repository pre-installed, which means that you can often just search for a program and it will be there. If FlatHub is missing, then you can find the installation procedure for a lot of different distributions on the official Flatback homepage. So let's go ahead and install Microsoft Edge, just because we can always remove it afterwards. Something that you can't do on Windows. In the software center, you're also able to find various different office suites. LibreOffice is the most popular one. It comes with a couple different layout options if you want to get it closer to Microsoft Office and has pretty good support for the formats used by Microsoft. If you are on the GNOME desktop environment and using the OneDrive integration, then you can even open and save files from and to OneDrive, just like on Windows. Another great alternative that is often reported to have even better Office format compatibility is OnlyOffice. However, I did experience a couple of bugs, like it reporting to have saved the file correctly to my file share, while it actually didn't. But that might have just happened to me. If you really need Microsoft Office for collaborations or because you rely on some features, then the online version or just an older release via the Vine compatibility layer might also be an option, but more on that later. Many desktop users also often find themselves in the situation where they have multiple drives installed in their PC. And if you're using Linux, you may have noticed that you need to enter a password every time you want to access them. This is a security measure which you can quite easily disable via the inbuilt disk utility of your distribution. It might look a bit different to you, but you should be able to find a setting which allows you to automatically mount the disk in a preferred path. I usually choose the MNT directory and the name I picked for the disk, just like this. A tiny note on the file browser. If you are used to having the folders being sorted before the files, then you can enable this feature in the file browser settings of your desktop environment. This is where you can also adjust the search options and the thumbnails should be loaded from remote network connections. Very important if you are connecting to a NAS. Next, let's set up Steam. Some distros like Bassite already come with it pre-installed. Some distributions like Fedora have it available if you enable the third-party repositories. Debian-based distros like Ubuntu, Linux Mint and Sorin OS can download it from the website and it's also available on FlatHub. The installation is straightforward and with the latest release, Proton support aka the compatibility layer for running Windows games is also enabled by default. So you can essentially just start downloading and playing games. If you have a quite powerful GPU in the mid or high tier range, then I optionally also recommend you to deactivate shader pre-caching, since nowadays the GPU drivers are up to power with Windows in this area and most of them can generate them on the fly. It saves some time starting up the games and constant cache downloads. For non-Steam games, you get a couple of options. Lutris is a program that allows you to install most non-Steam games and their related launchers from one interface. Bottles lets you create dedicated environments for each launcher, application or whatever else. This has the advantage that you can use different Proton versions, add additional libraries or easily clean up an installation if you want to remove it. For the Epic Games launcher, Amazon or GOG, the Heroic launcher is often recommended as the go-to solution. Whatever you end up with, 
The basic installation of most launchers is just click, 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 wait and install the games. And this is by the way also the way how you can install older versions of Microsoft Office, though you are better off looking up halfway up to date guides yourself. Let's move on to peripheral configurations. While Linux is not perfect in this area, there are a couple of tools that you can use. For mice, especially Logitech ones, Piper is a great tool to configure and especially save the configuration to the mouse's onboard storage if it has one. Just make sure that you install the version built for your distribution, since the flat up version is not shipping everything that is required to actually interact with your mouse. If Piper is not seeing your mouse, then you can try your luck with Solar, though it's also mostly targeted towards Logitech. If you are on Razer, then OpenRazer is for you. Out of all the support for peripherals on Linux, this program is the most advanced one. As for other mouse brands, you are unfortunately kind of bound to Windows. Not ideal, I know. If you have an RGB keyboard or RGB lights in your PC case, then OpenRGB is a great solution to configure them as well. Just a few recommendations. One thing that many also seem to miss on Linux is the ability to enable advanced audio profiles for their headsets. Luckily for us, easy effects as well as pulse effects, depending on what works on your distribution, are the tools for you. You can add an equalizer, boosting your bass or adjust it for certain effects like footsteps in games. You can add a noise gate and compression to your microphone to improve its quality and much more. Let's talk about setting up your printer and Bluetooth devices. Both are in a weird spot, because from my personal experience, everything was just plug and play. Add your printer via the wizard, search for a driver, and for most common printers, it's good to go. Same goes for Bluetooth, really. Like, I don't know, I haven't experienced any odd behavior with it personally. So theoretically, using Bluetooth on Linux is just extremely easy. That's all I'm really going to say about that. And last but not least, what you should definitely do after installing Linux is browse some extensions, customization capabilities, and just what you can do with your system. You can keep it as it is, optimize it, or just overhaul it completely. Many in the Linux community share their creations, and I gotta say, Linux capabilities do not only look beautiful, but still remain functional is quite impressive. And yeah, those were some things that you should do after installing Linux on your computer. Is there anything I missed? What are some of the challenges that you personally or others might run into? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. I really hope that you had a blast watching this video. If you did, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thanks again for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.